Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little... Or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the Internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. Not only have I been the owner of Mint Mobile for the last few years, I've also been a customer. I don't know if you knew this, but anyone can get the same premium wireless for $15 a month plan that I've been enjoying. It's not just for celebrities, so do like I did and have one of your assistant's assistants switch you to Mint Mobile today. I'm told it's super easy to do at mintmobile.com slash switch. New activation and upfront payment for three-month plan required. Taxes and fees extra. Additional restrictions apply. See mintmobile.com for full terms. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Selling a little or a lot? Do your thing however you cha-ching with Shopify, the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. Get a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash offer 23. Tis the season to shine with H&M. Discover the holiday collection and find fashionable pieces for your wardrobe or for under the tree. Get inspired and dazzle with this year's glam. From tuxedo styles, bow detailed pieces, impressive prints, and more. From unforgettable looks to unforgettable gifts. With fashion finds to home decor, find it all at H&M. Treat your loved ones and yourself this season. Shop in-store or at hm.com. So I want you to think back to when you stopped trusting, because I'm going to be honest with you. That's when you started disconnecting. That's when you started keeping score as to what things you were doing in comparison to what things other people were doing or your partner were doing. girl, imagine a life where you feel supported, connected, and understood. I get it. Being a mom is hard, especially when you're spinning so many plates. We exhaust ourselves trying to create the perfect life for our family. You deserve to enjoy your family without the stress perfectionism brings. On this podcast, I provide practical and relatable life experiences. I teach women quick and easy to use strategies to help them reclaim their identity, reignite their marriage, and enjoy their children. If you're ready to be challenged, then pull up a chair, grab a pen and paper, because it's about to go down. I'm Veronica Cisneros, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and this is the Empowered and Unapologetic Podcast. I don't want to start this podcast by saying it was a beautiful day. However, it was totally a beautiful day. We were at the river and our favorite place to go is Lake Mead. We usually stay with Willie's aunt. Shout out to the Emily. We usually stay with the Emily and we have the best time. Usually it's us and friends. This time, this time it was us. 
Um, my daughter had invited her boyfriend at the time. And so he had joined in, but it was a beautiful day. We went ahead and um, packed up, got into the boat. And when I tell you my family is a well-oiled machine when it comes to launching the boat, we literally are a well-oiled machine. Even Brookie, even my little monkey feet knows exactly what her job is and how to do it. Everyone has their task. Everyone has, you know, a job and is responsible for something. Like my girls can go ahead and go ahead and set up a bimini like nobody's business. They organize the boat and make sure that the by the time Willie and I jump into the boat and we're ready to take off, things are already done, already organized, everything, the kids are already sunblocked, everything's ready to go. And so it just happened to be one of those days. It was a beautiful day. Have I said that enough already? And so we go out and we decided to d- today we were going to just be, it was just going to be us. Usually at Mead, you can go ahead and choose. If you want to be around people, you go to the sandbar. If you don't, then you go out and you go out into one of the coves. And so that's exactly what we did. The kids were on the kayak. Aubrey and Brooklyn were on the kayak. They are so freaking cute. They were on the kayak, Aaliyah and her her boyfriend at the time were on the paddle board. Willie and I were just relaxing. And it was one of those days that time literally escaped us. So we're packing up, getting ready to go, and we leave. Mind you, one of the coves that we were in, it was like literally we were covered by the mountains. So we're like in between these walls of mountains. And we end up taking off, right? We end up heading back. It's about five, six o'clock. And that's usually when we go um, and get ready for dinner. So we take off and we notice that it was just odd. There was no one out, like no boats were out. And so we just kept on, right? And we leave this space that's completely covered by mountains and we go out into the open, Well, that's when we realized why there was no boats out. The water was ridiculously choppy. The winds were gnarly. So crazy. And all of a sudden, it got really scary. You know, one of those times that like you start to think about your life and I don't know about you, but It's one of those moments that you start praying to God to let you just get through this. Like, don't take my kids. Like, just keep us safe. It was one of those times. So we're taking off and we're literally about 20 to 40 minutes away from where we need to um, dock the boat. And that's very far, especially on a boat. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe it was 30. I don't know. But so we're driving, right? Willie's driving the boat. Aubrey and Brooklyn wanted to be at the front of the boat. Aaliyah and her boyfriend at the time were in the front on the way to the river, on the way to the coves. And um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Aaliyah and her ex wanted to be at the front on our way to the water. Brooklyn and Aubrey wanted to be in the front on the way back home. And so they just switched. That was fine until literally a wake hit so hard. It hit the boat so hard that the boat turned off. And that's when I started to get even more scared. I looked over to Willie and he was cool as a cucumber. I can tell that the kids were starting to freak out. They didn't say anything. Everybody was quiet. Willie managed to put the boat back on. And at this time, I had instructed Aaliyah to get our life vests. I know, I know. Veronica, you weren't wearing a life vest? No, you're not required to wear a life vest if you're over the age of 18. Aubrey and Brooklyn had their life vests on, but myself, Willie, and probably even Aaliyah and her her boyfriend at the time did not. And so Aaliyah went ahead and grabbed all of our life vests. Willie, still cool as a cucumber. But I can feel like this just fear not only for myself, but like it was this this wave of fear that was just circling our boat. 
the wakes kept like just kept on hitting the boat over and over and over again. Like it was so choppy, like ridiculously choppy. We immediately started put down the bimini because it was the bimini was like literally ready to break because of how strong these winds were. So we take down down the bimini. Willie manages to turn on the boat and we take off. And there we are again, like literally hauling ass because we were trying to get back to shore as quickly as possible. And then this wake ends up hitting the boat, going over Aubrey and Brooklyn, who are at the front of the boat, over Willie and I, and hits Aaliyah and her, her friend. And that's when I got even more scared. I grabbed my phone and I started to dial 911. Well, we're in the middle of the river. There is no internet. There is no cellular service at all. I look again over at Willie and Willie's still cool as a cucumber, but with his life vest on. And I'm just scared. I am so scared. Another wake hits the boat. This one was harder. Turns off the boat. I'm trying not to freak out. My old self would have started yelling, you know, are you kidding me? We just need to get to shore. Like, I, I I, would have wanted to see some fear in Willie to know that he was on the same page as I was. I would have wanted to, like, just get something from him just to reassure me that everything was going to be okay. And I knew that we were not okay. I knew we were not safe. However, I also knew that Willie was going to do everything possible to go ahead and make sure that we got back to shore alive. And I just knew that in my heart. So as Willie's trying to turn on the boat, literally our boat is being rocked like crazy, rocked back and forth like crazy. And it's uncontrollable. There's nothing you could do. You're at the mercy of the water. And Willie again manages to turn on the boat. And, you know, Willie looks at me and I was like, I tried to call calmly. I said, I tried to call 911, but there's no cell service. And I remember Willie turned to me and he said, we're going to be okay. And he looked at me and it wasn't like, we're going to be okay, get over it. You know, like I was nagging or bothering him. It was just... I don't know. It was like endearing. It was like with compassion. And I just sat quietly and I let go. I let go. And that was really, really hard for me to do because my babies are on the boat, you know, and then somebody else's kid is on the boat. And what the hell am I going to tell his kid, his, his parents, you know, and all of these thoughts just kept on racing in my head. And it really freaked me out when I started praying. And I remember telling God, I'm not done yet. Like, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Please watch over my kids, dear Lord. And just please keep us safe. Like, my kids are too young. Like, this is not fair. And I remember just like <sighs> struggling to just like be calm and be still. However, I knew that's exactly what I needed to do. I needed to let go and trust. And I wish I could tell you that I did that so easily because hello, I'm totally a therapist. And I mean, I teach this for a living, but I'm gonna tell you right now, that's completely bullshit. And no, I do. T I do teach this. However, I was like in it. I was, I was, I get, I don't know. I was being tested. You could say whatever, whatever you want to say. But in that moment, it was happening. And that fight or flight response wanted to kick in so badly because that's all I've known. And I've been, I've been a flawed human being. Not to say I'm not still a flawed human being. You bet your ass I'm still a flawed human being. But I've been flawed and acting on impulses and urges a lot longer than I've been cool. And so this was different. And it was uncomfortable. And so there we go. We continue on. Willie managed to turn the boat on and we take off. 
again, the wakes are hitting the boat. The boat keeps on turning off and Willie still cools the cucumber. And about, it was either the second or the third time that the boat turned off. Willie ended up changing his route. We were still en route towards the docks, but instead of being in the middle of the water, Willie started to um, drive the boat closer to shore. Now, he didn't tell me or explain to me why he did that. He just did it. And the boat was completely quiet. I was crying and I was trying so hard not to scare the kids because if they see me cry, then they would know. They would know. But I was scared. And I just started praying. And I remember there was a point where I also asked the girls to start praying. I believe in my heart that that's what happened. I'm, I might be wrong. But I remember we were all praying. And Willie kept on pushing forward. And, you know, he was driving along the shore and it felt like hours. It felt like hours. All of a sudden, there's a donkey, like on the side, like just chilling. There's a donkey. And Aaliyah gets so mad that we give her ex credit for this. But it was kind of just the humor we needed to break the tension that was going on in that boat. And all we heard was, look, there's a donkey. And we kind of busted out in laughter because it's like this high tense moment. And then there's a donkey, right? Like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> But we just kind of broke out in laughter and then quickly went back to silence again. And we we're all scared. I still wasn't getting any cell service. There was still no boats on the water. So there was no one to help us if anything happened. As we're getting closer and closer, I literally, I don't want to sound so cliche. I started thinking about my life, but I really did start thinking about my life and all of the things that I want to do. And if I am allowed to survive, if I make it, you know, if we make it, what changes am I going to make in my life? What what changes are going to happen for my family? And I just started crying. I just started crying. And it wasn't like a crazy cry, you know, but it was just like, it was full of emotions. And I remember looking over to my husband and I just told him, baby, you're doing a great job. You're doing an excellent job. And it might have been during the time that the boat turned off. It might have been the time, you know, when the water literally freaking went over the boat and, you know, splashed all over us. But I know there were segments where I would look over to him and I would tell him, babe, you're doing a great job. I love you. I would have never said that. Had it been 10 years ago, hell, eight years ago. No, I've been a therapist for longer than had it been 15 years ago. No, you know what? No, I'm gonna go back. I know I'm going back and forth, but no, had it been like eight years ago, nine years ago, seven years ago, I don't believe I had the skills to truly let go and trust. I, I just didn't have those skills. And I know I would have fought tooth and nail to try to control the situation. I know I would have you know, probably nagged at Willie. I probably criticized him, judged, became defensive if he didn't answer the way I wanted him to answer. I know it would have been a complete shit show and it wasn't. And after about 20 to 30 minutes of being on that scary ass trip, we ended up getting to shore. And the minute we pulled up, I remember a man saying, what the hell were you guys doing out there? The winds are crazy. There was a wind advisory. Of course, we didn't get that wind advisory because we were in the middle of the mountains, in the middle of the water with no cell service. Of course, we didn't know. Come to find out, 
Come to find out, the winds that day were about 24, I believe. Uh, now I'm going to text Willie because I want to make sure I get it right. And I'll go ahead and give you guys, um, I'm texting him right now. I'm saying, what were the winds when we almost died? Um, now, if he tells you the story, he would say, we didn't almost die, Veronica, calm down. But the reality was we did almost die. Like, I don't care how you slice it. We, we did. And the kids will back me up a thousand percent. Shit, even Aaliyah's ex would back me up. So he ends up, you know, we end up getting to the um, docks. The guy's like literally like, what the hell were you guys doing out there? Surprised, right? That we made it. And the minute we made it and we were on shore, everybody started to cry. Everybody started to open up and share their experience. I shared with them how scared I was and how I was so afraid that we weren't going to make it. Aubrey and Brooklyn were both in tears. Aaliyah was in tears. Willie was like, I was scared too especially when the boat kept on turning off. But we were all, we all like were just there providing each other with empathy, providing each other with compassion, and just this ability to go out and process through our experience with no judgment, with no criticism, with nobody trying to one-up the other person. It was literally us just sharing our experience and how how impactful it was for all of us. You know, the girls shared with me how they felt like they were literally going to die. Um, you know, Willie then told me the reason why I was driving the boat closer to shore was because I thought we were going to capsize. I really, I really thought we were going to flip over. And so I felt like if we did, if the boat did flip, that we were close enough to shore where we can actually swim and, and survive. I know looking for the right therapist can be challenging. However, feeling overwhelmed and disconnected is even harder. Life is filled with several twists and turns, some more severe than others. We do our best to handle them as they come and find ourselves at a loss, not knowing what to do or who to turn to. The clinicians here at Outside the Norm Counseling are here to help. We are here to assist you through this time of need. Together, we will identify your strengths and goals and teach you healthy coping skills. Together, we will develop a plan to help you live the life you want to live. Our team is compassionate, genuine, and we take a great deal of pride in providing an empathetic, non-judgmental approach to all of our clients. It's time you've waited long enough, whether it be for you, your child, or if you're in need of a couple session. We are highly trained clinicians ready to guide you. Schedule an appointment now by calling 951-395-3288. Again, that number is 951-395-3288. We're looking forward to meeting you and being a part of your journey. I share this story with you because I want you to think about when did you stop trusting your partner? When did you stop connecting with your partner? When do you feel like you started to go ahead and take over? When did you when did you start to adopt this yearning for control? Now, when I ask that question, I want you to think about it. You know, it kind of falls in line with a question that I often ask. When did you lose your best friend? And I was with a client today and I asked her that. When did you stop being his best friend? And she looked at me and immediately responded with, why well, I feel like he stopped being my best friend. And I could totally relate with that. Like, well, the minute he did it, I started doing it. But that's not the truth. That's not the truth at all. There are other things that are keeping us from connecting with our partner. There are other things that are keeping us from truly being a team. And one of them is not only did we start keeping score, but we stopped feeling safe and we stopped trusting our partner. There are plenty of times when I felt like Willie didn't have my best 
my like the best intentions. I felt like his needs trumped mine. I felt like I felt like his needs were way more important than mine and he was going to go ahead and and tend to those needs before tending to mine. But the reality was that was not only a lie I was telling myself, but it was because there was this pattern that I was following. And I was doing that all throughout my life. When I was a kid, I felt like I needed to take on my parents, you know, role for my siblings. I felt like I needed to be there to be my mom's therapist. I felt like I need to be there for my dad and help him with his addiction. I felt as if I had to be the one that was responsible for everything. Now as an adult, I realize that that's not the case. But I want you to think about your patterns. What do your patterns look like with regards to your relationship with your partner? And how are you constantly trying to control the situation? (laughs) So I'm laughing right now because Willie just sent me a text. They were 35 to 45 mile per hour winds. I'm going to tell you right now, you ain't going out. You ain't going out in the water when it's 35 to 45 mile per hour winds. And his second reply was, and no, you didn't almost die. Bullshit, Willie. I did almost die. I don't care what you say. And you're not here to argue with me. But back to what I was saying. I want you guys to think about when did you stop trusting people? Grab a pen and paper because I want you to write this down. When did you stop trusting that people had the best intentions? Was it because of something someone did to you or to someone else? Was it a form of betrayal? Were you shocked? What happened? I want you to write that down. What was it that had you second guess the world? I know a lot of you want to argue with me and tell me, well, it's not, it's not the world. It's my husband. Eh, no, 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 no. We learned this from somewhere. Where did you learn it from? Was it an experience? Was it an event? Was it something you witnessed? For me, I had learned early on that I can't trust others because their needs will trump mine. I can't trust others because my dad's addiction trumps the safety, and the sanity, and the comfort of our home. I can't trust my mom because my mom is blinded by my dad's addiction and wanting to save him. And my mom's constantly trying to distract us. And so I don't necessarily trust her because she keeps on trying to distract us and tell us everything's fine, but we know it's not. I can't trust my siblings because they're young. And I need to be the one that's responsible for them. I need to be that mom and that dad. But the thing is, that was a complete lie. My mom was doing the best she could. So was my dad. And my brother and sister, they were fine. They were going to be okay. I mean, my 12-year-old self would argue, are you crazy, Veronica? You remember the time when you watched your dad? Get high. You remember when this happened? You remember when this happened? Yeah, I remember all of those times. But I created this thought in my head, this core belief that I could not trust anybody. And so I was responsible for everyone. And because I felt like I was responsible for everyone, if I failed, then I was unworthy. If I failed, then others would get hurt. And that would be on me. That would totally be on me. So I want you to think back to when you stopped trusting. Because I'm going to be honest with you. That's when you started disconnecting. That's when you started keeping score as to what things you were doing in comparison to what things other people were doing or your partner were doing. And then what we started to do was we started to try to change our partner into being who we needed them to be. And the minute we started doing that, 
whether it be with a little bit of advice, feedback, or just blatantly telling them you're doing it wrong, you need to do it this way, or you know what, never mind, I'll do it myself. The minute we started doing that, in that exact moment, we stopped being his best friend. In that exact moment, we constantly told him that he was not enough. So the message he was receiving is, you're not good enough. You're a disappointment. I'll go ahead and take it from here. And we stopped being vulnerable. We put that wall up because we thought that it would provide us with a sense of security. But the reality is, it kept us disconnected. A good amount of us stop connecting with our partners because we stop spending quality time together. And this is one of the primary reasons why household chores and work is quick and easy. And we'll check that box off quicker than anything else. Another thing is we kept score. So we find reasons not to connect. We kept score so we would protect ourselves incapable so of what we, what we thought we would be incapable of getting hurt. And so we started unplugging. And instead of speaking highly of each other and sharing that level of fondness and admiration, instead we kept that to ourselves. Again, because they're not safe because we can't trust them to take care of ourselves and put our needs first. It's very important to go ahead and reconnect with your partner, especially if you're feeling disconnected by them. And for me, it was truly letting go. And I I can't tell you it just happened one time. It happened several times. But what I realized was those moments that I get to spend with Willie are invaluable. Because ultimately, he a thousand percent has my back. He does. And so I started creating moments of love where I was showing him that same compassion he had given me. And something just clicked for me. He was no longer the enemy. He was my husband, my partner, my partner in crime, my teammate, my best friend. And so where I want you to go is I want you to spend time identifying Where did you stop connecting? Like in what moments did you stop connecting? In what moments did you like, in what moments did you stop seeing your partner for who he is and instead started seeing him for all of the pain that was caused all of that past unhealed pain? Does that make sense? Because as I'm saying, it's it's probably not making sense. So if it's not making sense to me, it's not making sense to you. At what point did you become defensive? At what point did you start keeping score? At what point did you stop seeing him as your partner? What things were you doing in comparison to what things he was doing? And I know you quickly want to say, well, Veronica, he's responsible too. You're right. He is. But I mean, if he's listening, cool. If he's not, well, I mean, there's nothing I could do about it. He is responsible. And so are you. You both are. I want you to identify what your patterns are. And so I'll quickly give you um, one of my patterns just so you have like an example. Before a problem would arise, I would go into nitpicking and try to come up with a solution If Willie wasn't on the same page, oh, you bet your ass I would nag at him like no tomorrow and try to urge him and convince him to see it my way. And followed with, if he didn't see it my way, then I would do it my way regardless or I would bitch at him the entire time, forcing him to do it my way. And how did I do that? I'd constantly point out all the ways that his plan was flawed and mine was better. Damn, I was not part of a team. 
I was so laser focused on controlling the situation that I allowed my emotions to get the best of me. And so it is crucial that you understand your partner is on the same team. But building appreciation and respect requires you to heal some of those past pains. Hence, my first, first step for this is identifying where you learned this from. Where did you begin to learn that people will fail you? That people won't stand by you? That you'll have to take care of them? That you'll have to be their savior? That you'll have to rescue them? And from that, how did you position yourself as everybody's hero? I want you to take some time to go ahead and write this out. I want you to take some time to go ahead and really identify where this all came from because it didn't happen overnight. And it's something that definitely needs to go ahead and change. But you've got to be a part of that change. Otherwise, this vicious cycle continues. I didn't always think Willie was on my team and I didn't always think that because a lot of my past unhealed pain wasn't healed and I didn't know how to connect with that. I had no idea that this was even a thing, but working with women and working with couples, I see it happen over and over again. It's like both of them have this roadmap from childhood And they're trying to convince the other partner to um, go ahead and abide by this roadmap. It's kind of like, you know, I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine, you know, you going over to your husband's house as a kid. And then he immediately takes you to a quiet room and says, hey, here are all the rules of the house. Here are all the rules. Here's a whole list of all the rules of the house. You need to follow these rules. Well, wait a minute. It says that I need to be dressed up when I come. Yeah, I know. So you don't think I'm enough? No, 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 no. It's not that I don't think you're enough. It's just that I want you to survive in this household. So when you come to my house, you got to be dressed up. You got to be quiet. When you come to my house, you got to serve the man. When you come to my house, you have to submit. But that's not how I feel about you. But these are the rules. We want to play more, right? We want you to come over, right? Well, then just follow these rules. And you're like, wait a minute, homeboy, here are my rules. And this is what helped me survive in my household. And you guys are both arguing back and forth. This is nothing personal. You guys are literally trying to save each other. But you guys are trying to save each other because of what you've been conditioned to believe. And the minute you start understanding that is the minute you realize that your partner is on your team and you will start to connect with him. Because, again, you guys are are both coming from a place of love. But the way you guys are going about communicating it is a bit skewed. And that's where you need my help. But don't worry about it. I got you. But if you can truly embrace that it's not that we're pushing people away on purpose, it's just fear. Fear wrapped around in impulses and urges. That, my friend, is when you and your partner connect and experience true emotional connection. I want to hear from you, ladies. I want to hear from you. I just switched up my Instagram. It is now Hey Veronica Cisneros. I want you to go ahead and either send me a message or I want you to go ahead and post whatever you received from this message, whatever you've learned. I want you to post it and I want you to tag me, Hey Veronica Cisneros. Because I'm going to tell you right now, These are truly part of the stepping stones towards connection. All right, ladies, I'm going to go ahead and start and, and, and feel and just be, what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is the best part of my day is about to begin and it's 5.05. I'm going to leave my office and I'm going to get to my husband and my kids and the best part of my day is about to happen. I hope that happens for you as well. Bye for now. We can all use a little help in our marriage, especially when it comes to communicating. I have created a guide just for you. And guess what? It's 100% free. 
I will give you practical tips and easy to use strategies to apply right now. That's right, right now, today. You all know I'm a huge advocate for you mamas and I am on a mission to help you experience true connection and stress-free living. Ladies, we are setting our marriages up for success. It starts with you. You will find this freebie here in my show notes or go to empoweredandunapologetic.com forward slash guide. The information I will be providing you is next level and people pay good money to get these tips that I will be giving you for free. Don't forget to share this with a friend who needs it. What's up, ladies? Just want to let you guys know that your ratings and reviews for this podcast are greatly appreciated. If you love this podcast, please go to iTunes right now, write a review, rate the episode, and subscribe. Don't forget to share it with your friends. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking. 24 7 why we have no off switch and why we crave alcohol if you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is then i hope that you will check out the sober powered podcast new episodes every friday see you there i know i know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol i know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020, and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. I know. I know we've been taught that motherhood requires alcohol. I know we've been taught not to question our relationship with alcohol until we've lost everything. And I know we've been taught that if we do dare to examine our relationship with alcohol, we need to head straight to AA and declare ourselves an alcoholic who is powerless to alcohol forever. But what if all that isn't true? That's definitely not my story. I'm Suzanne, the host of the Sober Mom Life podcast. I'm an influencer who stopped drinking in January 2020 and since then, I've been telling the truth about motherhood, influencing, alcohol, and sobriety. If you suspect deep down that glass or three of wine at night might just be making motherhood harder, well, you're right. Come and join me as I chat with other sober and sober curious moms. Let's laugh, cry, and normalize sobriety together, all while we reheat our coffee for the fourth time today. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. 
from ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addictive Mind podcast has been about creating hope, listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there. It's easy to blame ourselves for our struggles with alcohol. We see people around us being able to control their drinking without any consequences, yet no matter what we try, we can't seem to figure it out for ourselves. My name is Jillian Teets, and I am the host of the Sober Powered Podcast, where I use my biochemistry background to explain the latest research in addiction and help you understand both why you drink the way you do and how to develop the skills and mindset you need to find freedom from alcohol. I discuss topics like why we think about our drinking 24-7, why we have no off switch, and why we crave alcohol. If you're struggling with your drinking or you know someone who is, then I hope that you will check out the Sober Powered Podcast. New episodes every Friday. See you there. Addiction impacts all of us. Addiction's consequences run through all of us. From ourselves to our loved ones and through our communities, addiction creates so much loss and grief. My name is Dwayne Osterlin, and I'm the host of the Addicted Mind podcast, a show featuring personal stories, expert guests, and vital information about addiction and addiction recovery. We'll talk with leading treatment providers to discuss the latest research and treatment options for this devastating disease and advocate for mental health awareness. We discuss topics like the importance of creating a community of support to helping loved ones to some of the latest research on psychedelic medicines. The Addicted Mind podcast has been about creating hope listening to stories of many amazing people that have overcome addiction and are thriving. If you or a loved one is struggling with addiction, subscribe to the Addicted Mind podcast wherever you get your podcasts or check out theaddictedmind.com. New episodes every Monday. See you there.